So you're finally ready to deploy your application. You've gotten everything else done. The last thing that you need to do is set up a database so that you could store all of your persistent data. Now, do you know how to set up a database? You as a developer, you know, your expertise is in coding and setting up a database is not exactly the most trivial of things. There's a lot of things that go into setting up a highly resilient and secure database, but you're going to have to provision a server. It could be physical, it could be a virtual machine. You're going to then have to install all the dependencies. You're going to have to then install your specific database. It could be Postgres or MariaDB or MySQL DB. After that, you're going to have to set up all of the firewall. You're going to have to make sure your database is as secure as possible. You're going to have to set up all the authentication and permissions. And after all that is done, you're going to have to then make sure that you set up high availability within your database cluster. You can't just have a single instance in a production environment because if that goes down, your database goes down. So you're going to have to deploy multiple instances of your database and set up replication across all of them. You're going to have to set up backups in case you lose your data. Now, all of these things are not easy, and I think most developers uh, do not want to focus on these things. And so this is where a solution like a managed database service comes in. With a managed database service, one of your cloud providers is going to handle performing all of those complex tasks when it comes to setting up a database. So all you get to do is get the connection details, add those details into your application, and it'll automatically connect, and it's going to already have all the configurations that you need. And so in this video, we are going to focus on AWS's managed database service called RDS, which is their relational database service. So it's specifically for, you know, SQL based servers, relational database servers. And we're going to focus on that. And you're going to see just how easy it is to set up a database using RDS. Now, before the days of having a managed database service, the way that you would provision a database would be, first of all, you would have to grab a server of some kind, and this could potentially be a physical one, but most likely it's going to be a virtual machine of some sort. And so if you're already integrated into the AWS world, you could just provision a EC2 instance that's going to host your database. Now, after you provision the EC2 instance, you're then going to have to set it up so that it'll actually run your database. And that's going to involve a couple of different steps. So you're gonna have to install all the necessary dependencies that your database needs. You'll then have to install the database itself, whatever that may be. So that could be Postgres or MySQL. Then you're going to have to set up all of the authentication and the permissions for the database. You'll also have to configure a firewall so that you only allow the proper ports and that you don't allow any unnecessary connections that could potentially compromise your database because this is where all of your application data is stored. So you wanna make sure it's as secure as possible. And then finally, over the course of the lifetime of your database, you're going to have to perform routine updates and patches to your server because this is just a regular server and there's going to be vulnerabilities that pop up over time. And to make things a little bit more complicated, right now we have one database running in one availability zone. So if this database or the availability zone goes down, we lose our database. And without our database, our application is not going to work. So we need some sort of resiliency at the database level. And so this usually involves having multiple databases running at one time so that if one database goes down, we can handle a failover. So to do this, you're going to have to deploy a couple of extra instances, usually spread across different availability zones. And then you're going to have to configure your specific database for replication so that all of your files and all of your actual data is replicated across all of the different instances. So it doesn't matter which database you send your request to, they should all have the same copy of data. And all of these different things of setting up your database and then configuring it to operate the way you want it to is no trivial task. And if you're a developer of some sort, most likely this is outside of your scope of abilities, right? You're there to write code. You don't really know how to administer a database. And so you have a couple of different options. You can wing it yourself and potentially make a couple of errors that could potentially be a security vulnerability, or you could just hire a database administrator, but keep in mind, he's also going to have to be paid a salary, which could be quite expensive, especially if you're a startup. So this is where managed database services come into play. And in this video, we're obviously focusing on RDS, but depending on what cloud platform you're working on, they all kind of follow the same principles. It's all about making your life easier because you're not a database administrator. You just need a database that's configured with good configurations by default, and it makes it very simple to configure and provision the database without any unnecessary issues or having to mess with any unnecessary configurations. 
So all we have to do is just with the click of a button, we can get a database up and running on AWS. That's all it takes, just one click of a button. And on top of that, with just one configuration knob, we can have it set up to be a resilient deployment of our database with replication automatically configured on the database without you ever having to connect to the database yourself. And on top of that, with just a click of a button, you can also set it up for backup so that that way, if your data gets lost, you have all of your backups um, being stored periodically within AWS. So as I mentioned, um, RDS, uh, which is AWS's relational database service, it's nothing more than a managed database service. So that means AWS is gonna handle provisioning and maintaining the underlying infrastructure. So you don't have to manage uh, the physical EC2 instances. You don't have to provision that yourself. AWS is gonna do that all under the hood for you. You just provide the configuration options that you want for your database and AWS is going to manage that and it's going to handle all of the proper best practices for setting up your database. And you'll see that whatever options you need, if you need to set it up for replication, if you need to set up backups, there's gonna be a knob for all of that. So all it takes is either just a one single click or a little check on a checkbox, and you'll be able to configure all of the necessary configurations. RDS supports all of the major relational databases. So if you're using MariaDB, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, these are all supported within RDS. And usually with any managed service within AWS, you'll see that there's a lot of benefits to using it because it integrates nicely with all of the other AWS services. So that can include IAM for authentication and authorization. Uh, you can have built-in security groups, uh, as well as uh, being able to quickly and easily monitor the metrics of your database as well. So let's go ahead and configure our first RDS database. And I'll show you just how easy it is to spin up a managed database service and connect to it. Now within the AWS console, go ahead and search for RDS. And here we're gonna select create database. So you can select this button up here, or you can select it down here. Or if you see this window that looks like this, if you've never been to this page, then select create database over here. Now you have two different options. You've got the standard create. This is where you're gonna go in and you're gonna select all of the different configuration options. Or you've got an easy create, which is kind of like um, all of the best practices automatically defaulted and checked off for you so that you just have to click one button and you're good to go. We're going to leave it as standard create for now so you can see all of the different options that we have with RDS. Under engine types, go ahead and select which database that you want to deploy. I'm going to use Postgres, but if you're following along and you want to use a different database, feel free to select that. And then after you do that, you're going to see that there's a version that you can select. So which version of Postgres do I want? I'm going to leave it as the default one. And then we've got a couple of different templates. So these are gonna be uh, used for depending on how you ultimately wanna use your database. So if you want to deploy this as a production database, then you wanna make sure you select production. It's going to have all of the uh, most resilient options set up. So all of the high availability, it's gonna be more performant. Uh, if this is for a dev and test environment, go ahead and select that. And if you wanna be in the free tier, then go ahead and definitely select that. I'm gonna select dev test because this is just a demo. Then you have the availability and durability. So this is all about how resilient do you want your database to be? So you can deploy a single database instance by doing this, but if you lose that instance, then your database is down. But this is for a development test environment, so that's fine. But if you are deploying a production grade database, then you wanna make sure you select one of the other two options. After that, I'm going to give my database instance a name. So I'll just call this my first DB. Then you have to provide the master username. I'm going to leave it as the default Postgres. And then I'm going to provide a password. If you want AWS to auto-generate a secure password, go ahead and select that. Under instance configuration, this is going to specify what uh, type of EC2 instance we want to deploy on. Because remember, your database still has to run on a server. So it has to run on a VM. And you can see the different options that you have available, all the different EC2 instance types that are supported. I'm gonna leave it as the default. And then here, this is gonna be some different storage information. So what type of storage do you wanna use? Um, how much storage do you want? And we also have, uh, if you want to enable storage scaling, you can do that here. Uh, you can, if you wanna save money, and I guess uh, it's probably gonna be a little bit different if you're in the free tier, but if you wanna save money, it looks like the minimum is 100 gigabytes. So if you want your database to be 100 gigabytes, just go ahead and put that in there. We'll enable storage auto scaling. And then down here, uh, connectivity. Don't worry too much about this compute section right here. 
Uh, you can deploy an extra EC2 instance next to your database so you can test connectivity. We're not going to worry about that, so I'm going to leave it as don't connect. Here you can select which VPC you want to deploy it on. I'm going to deploy it onto the default VPC. And then here we specify the subnet that we want to deploy our database on. I'm going to leave it as the default. Uh, do you want to provide public access to your database? So in a real production grade deployment, it would probably be selected no, because only your, um, you know, your backend or your API should be able to connect to it. But this is demonstration purposes. So I'm going to connect to the database from my local machine when we're done. So I'm going to select that. And then here we're going to select which VPC we want this in. So I'm going to leave it as the default. And sorry, this is actually the security group. So I'm actually going to create a new security group. And I'm going to call this my DB security group. So this is going to determine, um, you know, what traffic can actually talk to our database instance. Uh, availability zone, which availability zone do you want? So you could select which one or you could just select no preference. And if we take a look at the additional configuration, this is going to run on the default Postgres port. If you want to change that, you can always change that. Uh, then your different authentication methods. So we're going to leave it as the default password authentication. But if you want to use one of the other options, feel free to do that. Uh, we've got some default monitoring configuration, uh, some more monitoring configuration. And if we go down here, we've got a few other things like, um, you know, setting up backup. So this is where you configure all of your backup configurations. And you'll see there's just really just a couple of different options and you've got backup up and running. Uh, obviously, this would be far more complex if you just did this yourself. So this is one of the perks of having that managed database service. Uh, we've got encryption. And everything else for that can be left as default. So I'm going to go ahead and select create database. Now, this process does take quite some time. So I'm going to pause this video and we'll touch base once the Postgres uh, database is up and running and is available for us to connect to. All right, so our database is available now and we can see that under the status section. So I'm going to select this. And we're going to see all of the connectivity information right here in this section. So the two things that we want to focus on is the endpoint. So this is like the IP address or the domain name of your database. So this is how you actually reach it. And this is going to be the port that we had selected, which is the default port that the database is going to listen on. So with these two pieces of information, we can now connect to our database. And so if you're, you know, running your typical application where you have to provide the connection details. So let's say right here, we're going to provide the connection details to connect to our, our Postgres database under the host, you provide that endpoint that we copied the port. That's going to be the default port, the username, the default username is Postgres. And then there's going to be the password that you gave it. Keep in mind, this is the master account. So you would never actually want to connect to that. Um, in your application using that specific account, you'd create another account, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And then the default database that's installed on it is Postgres. Uh, now, I also have this tool called PG Admin. This is just a GUI for connecting to databases, uh, specifically Postgres. So if we actually wanted to connect to it, we can actually just connect to it using this. And I'll just, I'll just call this AWS-RDS. And then for the host, we're going to paste that long URL in. And then I'll provide the password. Hit save. And we can see we've now successfully connected to our AWS RDS instance. And we can see the default Postgres database. So here we can, you know, create a new database if we wanted to. And I can call this my, my app. And it looks like there's an error with that. Let me just that. And so now you can see that we've created a new database within our Postgres database. So that just verifies that we are now successfully able to connect to our RDS instance or our Postgres database. So at that point, you're good to go. All you have to do is connect to the database using these credentials, and you now have a full fledged running Postgres instance within your AWS environment. If you want to make any changes to any of the configurations, you can always select modify here. And this will show you all the different configuration changes that you can make to an already running Postgres instance. But if you want to also go ahead and delete your database, we can select this and we could select delete. And here it's going to ask if you want to retain the snapshots and the backups. I'm going to say, don't worry about that because this was just for demonstration purposes, but you wouldn't actually want to do that uh, in real life. And you have to select the I acknowledge. 
and then it's going to delete our database. And so that's how easy it is to set up a database using AWS's managed database service, RDS. So all it took was a couple of clicks of a button to set up a highly available Postgres cluster across multiple availability zones, and we automatically got backup set up for us so that we don't have to worry about losing our data. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.